Okay, could you guys hear me now? <laughs> Sorry. Um, now, 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 now it should be working fine. Yeah. The mic is muted. Oh, so I guess the sound setting was not correct. Hmm. I was working on the test version, so. Okay. Well, um, I'm currently working on a spacesuit design, and I'm trying to make it not too realistic because I don't really know the actual fact of like the spacesuits. But I'm trying to make something that like looks um, nice and looks pretty like pretty much like a uh, sci-fi version of a spacesuit, and. I'm currently looking at like references and collecting a lot of like references where the um, ISS um, like spacewalk is happening and like there's a lot of equipment around it. I did some like read some news about the spacesuit is running out because they <laughs> they are like trying to like reuse the same stuff. So there is that as well and. I'll be trying to like create something out of my mind, but also at the same time like working to like make it look a bit more factual than nothing. And currently I think the head is like too big, the helmet is a bit too big, so I'll be trying to make it smaller. But have a bit of like a cool factor to it. Um, let me know if you have any questions related to ZBrush, and I would be able to like answer some questions if it's related to the stream or um, if it's something like what I'm about to do or uh, what I did in the stream. So there's a lot of like cameras around the head when you're like walking around the space. So I'll be trying to add those kind of materials. And also, like uh, I was explaining when I was muting, so, um, but there should be some kind of like a, sh like a additional layer to the shoulders. So there's like more coverage to the suit. And my understanding is that like it comes up to this point and it covers the upper torso and up to the shoulders. And there's a lot of like additional layers to it, so it seals the spacesuit much more. So I did collect some like images like this, so you can see there's additional layers from here to there. And like I, I do think this is uh, the, the the body part is separate from the shoulders as well. So there's like three or two, two or three layers, and the 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 the, bo the bottom torso is a different material as well. So these kind of references would be pretty handy. So I recommend if you're making something like this, like to look into more references. And also I noticed that like um, I did some two like squares on the side, like like doing like horizontal lines. But when I look at the image, it does look like that, but it's like more vertical and it has more like a different kind of like, square. So this is really important when you're looking for like reference images. 
Is it for print? Um, no, I just want to make something. And like, I don't really want to care about 3D prints at this point. <laughs> if it looks really nice, I, I might print it, but yeah. How reliable is Decimator for making low polys for real-time graphics? Um, not really. Like, for example, if you're making a background image, like, for example, if you're making it something for an environment, or if you're making some rocks, then, yeah, like, 100% you can use it for um, those, like, things. But if you're using, like, Decimation Masters for a low polys and for, like, animation models, um, you, it's better to, like, do something manual or use the zero mesher to make some base mesh and then edit that poly to get, get a good result. What is your tip on sculpting the hand part? Um, depends on what you're, like... Like what? What kind of like tips you're looking for? But like for example, I usually just use the um, the IMMB parts for the hands, and then uh, tweaking them because like for example, um, this is pretty much the base mesh you want. So depends on what your what kind of like tips you're looking for. Individual fingers. Um, I would just do them, do the part, like, do the um, polygroup separate. So, for example, um, if I press the control key and with the move, I can select the individual fingers like this and then polygroup them really, really easily. So, this is one way you can approach it. And then you have the individual fingers really, really easy to select and fiddle around. So um, I would recommend this. And if you have something like this, then you can just like lasso and hide. And polygroup it like this. So yeah. Uh, where do you recommend zero mesh or, or manually doing retopology on 3ds Max or Maya? Um, depends on your usage and it depends on the studio as well like if you're working for productions um, usually uh, you can save time but by, by like using zero measure and then manually tweaking it but if you don't really know what you're doing then it's better to learn um, how to do it manually and then um, try to do something um, like auto automatic so i would recommend you go from manual and learn the basics how to retopologize things and then go to like auto retopology and speed up your process so um if you don't know how to walk um like it's better like you can't run right so it's better to like learn how to walk and then gradually get your um, speed up to the point where you're satisfied so And it really depends on what kind of like, um, like details or what kind of like topology you're looking for. Like um, if you're just like if you just want like rough um, topology for like sculpting, then fine. It's like you don't really need to do manual retopology. It doesn't really make sense. What is the best way to use ZBrush in order to fix photogrammetry objects? Sometimes I scanned objects that have some distortions due to missing photograph information. What is the best way to fix? Um, like, I usually do the dynamesh and then fill out the details or close the holes. And then if I need to like manually sculpt them, um, I do the re uh, zero mesher and then project back the details from the original mesh and then uh, fill out the details with sculpting. So I, I used to do um, 3D scans um, in my past work. So like I'm familiar with missing details. So like um, I usually take the photos and then if I need to sculpt them manually, I just not, like go ahead and sculpt them. So are you designing in ZBrush? Yeah. This is entirely in ZBrush, so. I just started from a ZBrush model you can find in the light box. And if you go to the project, um, there's the model called female.zpr file. So that's the model I started with. So you can see from the model 
this is the original model. I just made the, um, the soup with extract and then just go with it. Why does the brush material break? I've had a mesh with the golden material filled in multiple subtools and they were all erased and replaced. Um, I think you load it with the Z ZTL file. So if you load things in ZTL files, um, you remove the material informations because those kind of like material information is stored in a project file and not the ZTL file. So if you saved it from file and then press saved as, you can save the material informations. But if you like save as from the tools, it doesn't store the material file, material information. So um, the entire material information will be reset. And like, I think that's the reason why you don't really have the materials. So what inspired you to start work, working on this character? Um, I just wanted to make something complex. <laughs> I did de deleted the model from Van. I find her again. What? I deleted that model. How do I find it again? Um, you can download the latest installer and then you, you have ZBrush, um, like the default folders back in. So um, you can use the default um, projects from there. Like it's better to not tweak the default folders because um, sometimes the tutorials are using those kind of stuff as well as that like sometimes you really want them to speed up the process and not like starting everything from scratch and then just like starting things from like these kind of basic models. What is the best way to use Dynamesh without reducing detail? Sometimes when Dynamesh, I, even with high resolution, it reduces sculpt fine, fine details. Um, by like by how Dynamesh is working, um, you can't go without like losing details. Like you, you can try to like make it high res as possible, but like it's bound to like reduce some kind of like details because um, it's how Dynamesh works. And like it's better to like make a rough shape from Dynamesh. Like for example, like I have this kind of like small wrinkles, like for example, if I go back and if I do some Dynamesh, like for example, if I do a lower resolution Dynamesh and it would like lose some details, right? But it does get this kind of like rough shapes, um, like into the form. So I just need those kind of like rough shapes. So um, if I like store, control, like control press, the undo history bar and store the undo history. And then if I do the Dynamesh and if I do zero mesh, right? I can have this kind of like resolution, like roughly and getting the, the overall shape of the original mesh, right? And then if I want to project back the details, I can just like go to the, um, go to oh, my brain is not working so if you go to the project and press undo history it's gonna project back the original mesh from the undo history so if I do this and repeatedly like dividing and projecting back the details I can like get the like the original meshes like details up to the point where I'm satisfied. So um, like it's like Dynamesh is usually used for rough designs. So it's not really like a, like, a per like it's not perfect. It, it's not perfect for everything. So you, you gotta use um, like Dynamesh and Dy like the re uh, Dynamesh and Zero Mesher according to your needs. So by doing this, like you're like making the entire like details intact and you're going to have the poly polygons like more in a cleaner form. 
but Dynamesh is not really built around that. It's more for like wrapping designs and then like, creating a really quick shape out of it. So there's a huge difference between those two. So, so if you're mixing between Dynamesh and Zero Mesh, the, the, the intent of the feature is different. So you got to understand that. So what I want to make is the 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 cover for the upper torso. So I'm gonna try to replicate this. And I don't really need this kind of like small details from the under like under layer, so I'm just gonna like sculpt it roughly and get the designs first. I can sculpt the the actual like folds and details later on. So does that mean you do not apply Dynamesh once you're finished and the final touches on the asset? How do you make sure the topology of the finished high poly asset is neat without using Dynamesh? Um, it depend. It really depends on what kind of like data you're working on, but like um, Dynamesh, like you, you usually switch to the um, the subdivision workflows compared to a Dynamesh workflow. So when you're like making some rough designs, like when you're like looking for an interesting design choice, and like looking for kind of like um, if you're making a rough outer shape, then Dynamesh is the tool for you, but if you're already like um, the outline is like correct, like the, the the outline is not like roughly done, and you want to go to details, you don't use Dynamesh because it will break the, the details um, that you want to keep. So you switch to the um, the subdivision workflow. So that's the huge difference between Dynamesh and Zero Mesher. So if you want to switch to a more detailed like workflow, you use zero mesher to switch from Dynamesh and then divide the detail, divide the topology and then sculpt on top of it. And now you have um, like multiple layers of like subdivision. Like you can have, like if you go to the geometry and go to the subdivision layers, you have like four layers because I divided up to four layers. And now if I want to change the rough underneath shape, like for example, if I want to like remove this like fold entirely like this, I remove the under like the, the subdivision ones, like the fold. And then if I go out, it still has this fold. But if I do this like one by one, it's gonna like remove the the folds entirely, so it's easy to manipulate and like change big change change big stuff um, if you go to the lower subdivision layers. So I usually recommend um, that you switch to a subdivision workflow after you're satisfied with the outer shape or the like the bold shape of the model. So some people get really confused with the um, Dynamesh workflow and they rely too much on Dynamesh. And like, I usually don't recommend that because the the topology or the poly count will be really, really um, like intense if you st stay too much on Dynamesh. And then you can't really add details without destro destroying it. So it's better to like switch to a subdivision workflow at like, when you're satisfied with the out, like overall shape, the rough shape. Don't people use Dynamesh in post-production uh, to be sure to get the mesh watertight? Um, yes, but usually you would want to project back the details. So it depends on what kind of like workflow you're using. So. How do you prevent topology warping when you're sculpting with high division amounts? 
Um, depends on what you define definitions of well, like warping. Like for example, if you don't want like pinch, like for example, if you use um, pinching like this, like it's like bringing the out like the the topologies from outside to a specific point, right? And if you have this kind of like stretching, um, what I would recommend is to like uh, go to a lower subdivision and make make this a bit loose, and then you go to the um, subtool and then pre press reproject higher subdivisions. And then because you have the difference between the lower subdivisions and the higher subdivisions where it, the higher subdivisions pinch, you have this kind of like, um, difference between the two. And now you have this kind of like crease happening on the higher subdivisions without the pinching happening on the topology. So you can do this as well. But usually like, people would prefer, like, prefer to not use this kind of like pinching brush at the end of the sculpt. So if you're adding some details, it's better to like, um, like create the bigger folds on the lower part of the subdivision levels. And then if you want to add things on top of it, it's better to like go up the subdivisions and then add more details on top of it. So you do the, you do the same process like if you want to change big shapes do it on the lower subdivisions if you want to make some subtle differences you go up the subdivision levels and do it there so with zmodel sometimes when edge loops get to the close get too close the intersection point combined what is the method of separating the points so um there was well, Z, Z modeler has been always like this, but like um, when the uh, micropoly was introduced, there was a change in the welding algorithm. So it want, like we we wanted to speed up the process of weld of the welding. So like he's talking about, or he or she is talking about the stuff when you put the like insert really 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 close together sometimes the points are going to weld so to prevent this um, you can set the setting of the like if you go to preference geometry you have the setting for the modular welding tolerance so default is 10 and this should be working the same like as in i think it was in 2020 or 2021 and like if you put this slightly down to one um, this welding would happen less frequently so even if you're putting the topologies really really closely together um, it's less bound to happen so you can prevent from prevent that from happening what tablet you use i use the Cintiq, Cintiq uh, i think it was the 24 Pro. So it's a Wacom product that I use. It's really nice, like I like it. What is the go-to method of generating details terrains for Unreal Engine 4? terrains um and like you can sculpt things in zbrush and then just decimate the mesh and then send it to like unreal but like why specifically to unreal engine 4 in 5 you have like um the feature called a uh, nanite which is i think it was nanite and now you can like put zero mesh or no, no you, you can put zero z brushes like geometry data directly into the engine and then edit stuff there as well is there a way to unweld the points um 
usually I'd split the polygroups and then like try to like um, split split the entire polygroups. But for individual like edges, currently there is not a way, from my understanding. No. But you can, like, if you want the entire, like, um, geometry to be separate, you can do that from the modify topology and, like, you can unweld group borders, you can unweld all, and then you can, like, se separate the entire mesh as well. So you can do that. How reliable is the paint function for making good textures for game art? Well, it depends. Like, um, like if you really, really want a really, really cool, like, good texturing, like, um, usually, like, you can paint rough paints on ZBrush and then send that, like, um, texturing information for, like, Photoshop or, um, like other uh, dedicated texturing or, uh, like softwares, but uh, in ZBrush, the benefit of like having poly paint is like you don't really need to rely on UV texturing. So the benefit of like having like poly paint is that like you can change things. Like you can use Dynamesh, you can change the topology, you can use zero measure and project back the uh, poly paint informations. But, like, you can paint things when you're, like, still designing things. But you can't really do texturing when you're changing the designs, right? So there's a benefit of, like, having poly paints versus having the UV texturing, which is more clear, clean and, like, more uh, precise, right? So... Regarding the broken material question, I've worked on the particular mesh for a while and when loaded the many materials, even the custom one were in place. When it broke, it has it was four hours into sculpting when opening a new material and the material palette has like 20 material pop up. That all says fast shader. So for the fast shader issue, um, that happens when you have additional materials like you something you tweaked or something that you customized but you didn't save it. And then when you're trying to load the like project, because that link is not there, uh, it breaks that like um, loading process. And then like because the index of the material is like um, default will default to the first fast material, so it gets swapped to the fast material. So that happens when ZBrush is not really sure what material you like used, and like it's failing to load that material. So it's better to like um, export the ZTL file and then like bring back the um, well, uh, load it into another project file, a brand new project file because those like link is broken now because you you like you didn't really keep that pr uh, material or somehow the material you saved is stored elsewhere and now ZBrush can't access it. So that's the reason why it's happening. So like, for example, I had that when I was using a custom material I saved on my PC, but when I loaded the like the, the the project file in a different PC, it had that kind of like issue. So it's not what like it, it's not br like ZBrush breaking things, but it's just like ZBrush can't access that material file or material data because it's not there. So. Does ZBrush have an automatic unwrap function? Polypaint doesn't need an unwrap and UV information. So for polypaints, uh, polypaints doesn't like rely on UVs. So like if I want to paint something, like for example, if I want to paint a, like something red or something blue, I can do this. 
because like it's painting onto a vertex and each vertex is changing colors so it doesn't need UVs but if you want to make this into a texture you would need UVs so you can go to the lowest subdivisions and then go to the Z plugin where you can open up UV master and then press unwrap and because you now unwrapped the model you can go to the UV map and then see how it's morphing so just turn off the pump and now this is like the result of the UVs so now what you can do is assign a texture map like for example a, a tile texture for example and then you can see the tile happening on the model or um, you can create something from the polypaint say like if you press create new from polypaint you can make the polypaint into a texture and then because you have the texture made on made from the polypaint you can change the like you can change the UVs like for example if I delete the current UV delete UV and then if I make a new one like unwrap <coughs> And then, for example, if I want to like tweak the colors, for example, if I want the vertical lines or like cross, and then if I go to UVs, because I have a different UV, well, it looks pretty similar because it's the same topology, but like currently I deleted the UVs initially. So now if I go to the textures and then create the polypaints, I can uh, create the texture from the polypaints. Now I have a different texture with onto a different UV. So now I don't really need to rely on the like UVs to apply a texture. So this is handy when you're like making designs and you're not really sure when the design is like confirmed or not and then you want the color information as well because the art director says that you want some coloring happening you don't need to go to photoshop to replicate some colors so which which is really nice to like for rough designs Um, Hannibal, like if you, like, it's better to like, um, load, well, well, it's better to export the current fold, export the current model to another, um, Z project file and, well, it, it's better to like export the file as a DTL and load it into a brand new Z, ZPR file. So, um, like. The fast shader shade, the fast shader issue are uh, like we are aware of that issue, but the link between the um, the material with the project file is broken, so there's no real way to recover it unless you start it from a new like project. Which method of model? Posing, do you find more convenient polygroup bones or divide the model into parts and sculpt into a pose? Depends on your usage. Like, um, I prefer to use the polypaint and masking and then moving around method where I can move around things with the transpose master. But some people prefer to make, a, like, make the entire mesh um, separate so they can split and like move around more freely without restrictions but because it doesn't really retain the topology and if i want to like change things with like typos then i would prefer to use the um the transpose master like method because it doesn't change topology how effective is polypaint for making low poly as 3d assets for games 
uh, low, uh, because polypaint relies on um, vertex colors, um, sometimes it's not like enough to like have the like the texture information to be able to be like efficient. But in some cases, like if you have the like the the lower like polygons already intact. You can just divide it without smoothing and then paint on top of it and then get the details. But depends on your mileage. Like I, I like I would prefer to just use a dedicated three like painting applications when it comes to low polys. But you can have some like rough like design choices happening. So like if you want something like a color of black or a color of yellow on some some models, and then you can just put that on top when you're like designing things. Like currently, this is just a rough like black and white like models. But like for example, if I want some like uh, a flag. Of this like space suit, then I would put some design to it. I've had an issue with perspective breaking as well. Switching from also to an 85 didn't make a major difference. Didn't know it was breaking until. I was about to send off the project and delete the extra materials and the whole mesh change. Um, like, if you don't really have a correct like set of like models, like for example, um, if you insert something really really outside of the bounding box, like for example, if you're expanding the bounding box like this, like it, the, you have the sphere really really outbound from the model like this is going to affect the perspective so if you have this kind of stuff just remove it like also there's a difference between a, a draw like if you go to draw and if you're using a universal perspective camera and the old method of the like perspective camera, you, you're going to have a difference between the two. So if you have the like the universal camera with the 85 like set, it's going to look like this. But if you have a perspective with angle view of 85, it's going to look different from the universal camera. So if you're like trying to load an old uh, project and then if the data is getting confused, that's the reason why. You can drop a sub tool in your sculpt that keeps protecting from breaking. Um, I don't know what you're talking about, to be honest. What are good tips for hard surface modeling in ZBrush? If you want to ask hard surface models, um, it's better to ask Paul Gabriel, which which is my colleague. Um, he's really good at like hard surface models. Like I, I I'm just, I'm I'm just beginners. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a beginner when it comes to hard surface. So yeah, um, it's better to like make the rough shapes in like primitive forms and then add more complex complexity as you go along. Yeah, um, Hannibal. If you have any like specific like questions related to like usage 
or if you're having some like bugs or issues or like suspected bugs, um, you can send them to our support team to get some help. Um, like we can look at your product files and then see what the issue is, and like if there's a bug, we can fix it. So. Next time, if you have any issues, just send it to our support team. You can contact our support team from supportpixelogic.com and you can go to start a conversation on the top right corner and then send the information there. You're, you're going to need to like upload the folders like, for example, Dropbox or um, somewhere else and link the URL to the ticket. But yeah, we'll take care of it. I want some some more folds on the model, I guess. I don't think I need this. I think it's better to just move this around and get some shapes. Is it worth in investing in a sketch pad with a screen? Uh, you mean a display display pen tablet? Depends on your budget, to be honest. Like, um, I prefer using like Cintiq because, um, like, I've experienced both like pen tablets and display pen tablets, and for me, like having invested in the display pen tablets it's like it sped sped up my workflow because i don't really need to like do some restrokes and like going back and forth between like control z and stuff um i can do more like strokes directly and without any like redos and stuff so it's saving my time and I usually tend to not like recommend using a small screen. Like you have those kind of like 13 inch um, monitors, which is really, really small, right? Like, like usually I had to like look into the actual screen more closer and my, like I was getting tired and like I had to like work leaning forward and like my back started to ache. So it's better to invest in a like a bigger screen if you want. If you have the budget, like it depends. But like if you're like using the pen tablet for one like if you're using 8 hours a day of the pen tablets, then it's better to invest in a really good pen tablet. It's worth it. Like, I think the health is more worth the actual, like, equipment itself. Like, um, you don't want to pay for medical, like, bills when you're having some backaches, right? And if you're having some backaches, like, it would affect your overall, like, workouts. Like, if you're working 
on the like desk for like 20 like well if, you, if it's a hobby like for, let's say like if you're working on the um, personal work for like 20 hours a day or no, 20 hours a week and like if you don't want to stay on the seat because your back aches and that's going to affect the overall output of your like work right so i usually would recommend um, having a better like pen tablet and bigger screen if you have the budget or if you can afford like it would affect your motivation as well do you ever have problem with drivers going out losing control of the pens well weird for me like um i don't really have any issues like i'm really surprised like i i did have a lot of issues when i was using the um the 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 non-display ones but now working with the displays like i don't really have any like issues like i just need to calibrate calibrate once a month and that's pretty much it like yeah cheap one really comes with the price like it's cheap but by like you're sac sacrificing a lot more by just from the price like that's what i feel like like i would prefer to like prefer to pay for a bit more because it's like easy to manage easy to handle like that sort of things like you have those kind of in invisible costs when it comes to like cheap pen tablets like i don't want to use like my my i, I think my like the, like work hours or like my, my like like motivation is much more important than the actual press itself so for me like it's worth it for like investing things when texturing and other times when color is important, how do you ensure your textures will look different? Just look good in different displays. Sometimes my textures look different on other screens. Um, well, the the best way to like um, check it would be if your uh, monitor is calibrated to sRGB or some like specific. Um, color uh, profiles so you have those kind of like um, what was it the monitor calibrators so you can check if your screen is showing the correct color um, and then you can check if your like color is precise So some screens have those um, features, like for example, if you're using a color edge series, um, it does have a automatically cal calibrated screens, which is like trying to calibrate the screens um, by looking at the colors of the screens and then checking if that color is showing up properly. So you have those monitors as well. So if you really care about color cali calibrations, um, it's better to like invest to invest into those kind of displays as well, but usually um, I just like use a cheaper like color cal calibrator you can buy separately from the monitors and then like using that to check the monitors like color profiles and then see if it's like showing the colors properly so you can calibrate the screens. Do you have a protective film installed on your tablets? Um, no, like I don't really need to. Like the Wacom Cintiq 24 I'm using doesn't really have any like um, need for the protective films, to be honest. Like I don't use them. But yeah, some people would like place some films, but like for, for me, it's not. Like I don't have any like. Um, obvious scratch marks like I use the default pens 
and some people like try to like change the the pen nibs and they have some couple of issues but because that's not native from wacom um it, sometimes it's not compatible or like adds more like s scratches on the screens and then it gonna it's gonna like damage the screens so it really depends but i i don't really have any issues like i'm, I'm just using default pens or nibs The, the most issues I have with the screens is that like my hand is sometimes oily so those kind of like hand marks or handprints or fingerprints will be um, sometimes staying on the screen so I do need to wipe them but that's pretty much it <laughs> like that's a small matter so I usually put some like artist gloves onto it so I can prevent the fingerprints from like showing up on the monitor more like a different layer compared to the middle part of the torso. I wonder why. And they don't really have a like shoulder to be honest. Like they look more really muscular like this. <laughs> it doesn't really have a shoulder. So it doesn't really have a pad. Hmm. I think it's more, much more closer like this, and the box a bit more bigger like this. What compute specs do you recommend for optimal usage with relatively high subdivisions? Well depends on the specifications of high subdivisions but um, like I'm using a i7 fourth generation generation and like Intel and it's like running fine but like it's better to have a bit more oomph to it like <laughs> I, I, I hear twitching yes the bird is still outside my windows yeah 
and like it attracted mites so like sometimes the mites are coming into my house like i i, I i'm using spray bugs to prevent it but uh, <laughs> headache but like for optimal usage, I would recommend the brand new i7s or i9s or the AMD equivalent of like Ryzen 7 or 9s. And if you can afford it, like Threadripper would be the best, I guess. Mountain Man, there are monitors with 99 RGB palettes, so every monitor color is perfect. Or you can use two monitors to check the colors. Yes, yes, that would be the solution yeah what gloves are you using this was uh, Morgan designs um, digital artist gloves we did a collab in the sum past summit and we were handing out um, ZBrush artist gloves and this was the Z-Man logo gloves, you can see. I'll link the Morgan Designs uh, gloves. So you can find the gloves here, but I don't think they sell the Z-Man logo version nowadays. You can ask, a, ask our support team if you want. Uh, I'm not really sure if they have additional stocks, but like it used to sell on the ZBrush store page with, I think it was, hmm. Yeah, I don't think they sell it anymore, Sprint. Yeah. It didn't post on Twitch. Let me just post it again on Twitch. Here. <laughs> yeah, like, all these gloves are really awesome. Like, it prevents your sweaty hands from, like, making your screens dirty. Like, I use it all the time. Uh, what workflow would you usually, what would you generate use generally use from 3ds Max to make game ready assets for a game engine like Unity? Uh, hmm. What workflow? So usually it depends on the 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 company you're working for or what kind of like team you're working with, but. Um, I usually make the concept in ZBrush like this like for example I just made this like from scratch and this is high poly right and then I go to a dedicated software for like retopology for example like 3 ds Max or Maya or um, Topogun or you can use ZModeler or ZeroMesher as well um, then get the low polys and then project that the, the the high poly detail to a low poly and then like rig it and then bring it to a like game game engine like the the men, the, the things you mentioned yay for artist gloves yay for Ian <laughs> yeah this is really handy nice When I look at the spacesuit image, there's more like leeway underneath the torso. Like, I don't know. I don't know if it affects the spacesuit because it's inside. 
and not outside the the space station. I wonder how much difference it makes. Hmm. So another thing I noticed is that there's more like vertical, like sphere spherical like shape. Mine is more like a eyeball. <laughs> so I need to like work on that. Yeah. Sometimes your like oily hands will be like stopping the the actual stroke itself to like from happening. So yeah, pretty annoying. Pet birds are beginning pigs. It's a wild bird which is living outside my window and making me making cute noises, but sometimes pretty much annoying. <laughs> Because currently in Japan it's like in the morning, um, you can hear the birds tweeting really, really loud, up to the point where it's like around lunchtime, they start to like um, be a bit more calm than the mornings. <laughs> I don't know. You, you I, I think you can find birds flying around in my house like like in the Disney Disney movies I guess I guess some birds like talk well you can see talking birds on Twitter you know <laughs> I'll just glove only ship to US oh oh there is things like a proxy shipping you know as well might be handy What are your top three favorite brushes tool for sculpting details? Details? Hmm. Well, Dam Standard is, is definitely one of them. Dam Standard, a custom standard brush with like alphas and like Noisemaker would be the third favorite, like third favorite tool for detail. Okay, I'm gonna add some patches. Let's see. I just need to have something square, flat, bit of width. So 
something like this. Maybe a bit thinner. And let's see if we can use the... Well, we just need to divide it a couple of times again. Without the smooth. I guess this should be fine. And matchmaker mm At least it's not a crow, a crow calling. It was a pair that we used to sit outside my window and wake up. Wait, oh, yeah. There's a huge crow problem in Japan, so especially in Tokyo, the crows are pretty smart. They sometimes like, 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 go to dumpster diving to eat and like find some foods. They sometimes steal foods from the park. Um, they sometimes like walk the crosswalks when the the green light is on. So yeah, and those kind of stuff are seen in Tokyo. So you can imagine how like evolved our crow is and how prob problematic it is. It's interesting, but it's problematic as well. <laughs> Mirror, bend as new subtle. Yep. And now I just need to color them white. And I just want them smoothed a bit, like so. And let's see what we can add. I think the backpack is a bit smaller than I thought, so I would add more height to it. And like looking at references, I noticed there's the, the backpack is like completely wrapped around some kind of like a cloth. So I'm gonna like try to replicate that. So I would duplicate this and because this doesn't really have that kind of like um, the resolution I want, I'm gonna divide it and I'm just gonna like use the current base mesh as a collision and because I just use the inflate one I think inflate 0 0.5 would be fine and then try to do some inflates and expand and no gravity let's see what happens So this happens. So if I do some like polishing, because this kind of like, corner is like pinching, I'm gonna do some like um, smoothing out later on. I'm gonna do some expand again. And you can see this kind of like, like, like sh shrinking happening, I guess. So this is currently too much, I guess. So I would go back to the original one, expand a bit, and then inflate. Hmm. I think the inflate value is a bit quick. 
and I would like to have more iterations, like 400. And then let's see what happens. Not bad, not bad, but a bit different from what I want. So I'm going to do something manual. So I'm going to switch the standard and then change slightly the, the brushes. So alpha 38 and then try to sculpt something. Oh, I want some, a bit of a lazy, lower lazy step happening and with a less intensity. Hmm. So currently I would want some kind of control over my sculpt, so I'm sculpting things manually after the simulation is done. But I do want that kind of like simulation's randomness, so it doesn't feel like ri like everything is like um, manually sculpted. Like, like if you're working on a stylistic piece then it's fine but like for me like I would like to have a semi realistic kind of like look to it so I'm, do I'm doing things like a bit more different and now I can just like look at the entire mesh and then see how it looks Like sometimes it's like important to not make it too much equal. Like if the folds look really repeated, it's not realistic at all. So because the the wrinkles are like based on topology, like it's gonna have those kind of like equal distinct like folds happening. So it's better to like remove them sometimes, but not too much because you do want that kind of like silhouette or that, that kind of like randomness happening. So you don't want to shrink it too much, but. And then if you want something a bit more to the surface, you can use the inflate brush to get this kind of like circular look onto the surface so it looks more like a like a fold or a wiggle in, underneath and you can also use the alpha brushes well the alpha settings to get this kind of like shapes And looking from the image, there's um, like logos on the back side as well. So I think maybe adding some harder um, materials compared to the folds that are happening would be interesting. So usually those kind of like country flags would have a specific size, but currently I'm not gonna rely like I'm not gonna like spend too much time on the country flags because I, I don't want to like focus that too much. Currently I'm thinking about like hmm adding a Japanese flag would be nice, but I don't think 
I'm up, I might come up with some kind of like different designs for different things. So, like, for example, I just placed some kind of like square so I can see where the things are. And now I just want to like replicate this underneath so I have a more smaller icon. And if I want to like sculpt this to feel it's like embedded into the surface, like you can like sculpt it, sculpt it, and then like remove the inner details and then like you can draw some squares as well, like for example. You can use the mask rect. And then sculpt things around it. Well, maybe adding a bit of a, like a mask to it. Well, a bit of blur to it. And then you have that kind of like natural, like embedded look to the surface. This is sometimes handy for like standard brushes or um, inflate brushes. some straight lines I seem to have 40 minutes more to go. If you have any questions, let me know. It's really comforting to just like sculpt folds, like I love folds. <laughs> I don't know why, but like it, it it's really com comforting. Uh, let's see if I can use a couple of like cloth brushes.
How many hours do you spend on sculpts? Um, depends on the project. Like I sometimes spend 100 hours on one project and then I only spend like four hours on one project in some cases. So it really depends on the project, but like my average would be 24 hours, I guess, just on sculpting. So like I don't really count the hours I'm not really working on things. This model you're looking at is like roughly like three hours and a half. So you can see like I, I did start from a base mesh from um, the default file. So it's not really like 100% accurate to say that like I can do this in like three hours, but like because I started from a ba like base mesh, I can spend like like cut a lot of time to it. I can just like focus on the design aspect. So it looks like some kind of like vertical vertical like shapes which will be happening on the side it is interesting I guess I could use the tapering, tapering, something like this, smaller. Hmm, I could delete the loops, I guess. Hmm. Edge loops, delete loops. And a bit more smaller, I guess. If it's too big and bumpy, it's gonna like be annoying for the astronaut. And currently, the design doesn't really allow for a knob to like be rotated, so I'm gonna make sure it could be rotated as well, so it functions like the visor is gonna be lifted properly. Like, I do have a couple of references like these. Like, you can see the astronaut helmet with that kind of like knob you see there. Those kind of details are really important. You can see the inside of the helmet where the neck is like 
Well, this is not a neck. This is the, the, this, the entire head of his guy. Um, yeah, you can look at that kind of like internal structures as well. You can see there's a circular things inside. Yeah, these kind of stuff is pretty interesting. Like, it's good for references. So what I'm going to do is add that kind of knob and try to like put that into location. I guess it was something like that, yeah. And since I've tapered things, I think I'm gonna move this around so it's more I think I could just use the clip curve. That looks fine. And there's a huge like light and camera. So I just need to like put some like squares so I can think about this later on when I'm designing things. The best thing about ZBrush is that like you can just roughly design things and think about them later on. And then if you have that kind of like rough designs, you can do anything you want. So Is it, is it vertical? Mm. It, it is vertical, but is it like diagonal? Like, is it tilted a bit? Oh wait, oh, <laughs> I didn't know you could like change the angle of the the cameras and the lights. Like, wow. Oh, so you have that like cable, which is like. Fix fixing the oh. interesting. <laughs> yeah, so you you learn a lot from like looking at images like this. So I guess something like this. something like this I guess and then use that to like position this slightly and let's see I want to move this forward so it has that kind of stuff And I do want something to cover this as well as that cable I saw. But <laughs> looking at the reference image, another issue I have is that uh, I'm looking at what is this? <laughs> hmm. So you don't see things like this. But now you see it like this, so you need to have like a couple of images that it like confirms the additional things that it has. So let's see where I can replicate this. Yeah, these kind of looking at the references is always fun. Like you find a lot more things that you don't really know. And then, like you, you, you have to like tackle them one by one to see how it would look on the model and like how how things are like used 
So, like, looking at the reference, another thing that I noticed, it's not a square, it's a circular thing, a, a, a semi-circular thing that looks like more like a rectangle, and like it has more complex shape. But currently, I don't want to replicate this right now, so what I would do is that, like, I just would make this slightly easy to, like, change, and then I'm gonna use the um, move infinity depth so I can tweak this like so and get the rough, rough shapes done. Yeah, so something like this, I guess. And maybe squeeze it a bit. Slice it, slightly tilt it. And now I do have some kind of like base mesh to work on and looking at the image this doesn't collide with the like the lights in the cameras like the 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 box is separate so I just need to move this around so it doesn't collide I think the camera is a bit big so let me just move this around like this And let's see, we have additional like coverage over here. This looks more like something like this, I guess. <laughs> the birds are twitching constantly, like, sorry if it's getting a bit annoying.
Yeah, something like this, I guess. I'm trying to not make it too realistic because that would be really hard for me. <laughs> so my intent is to not make it too realistic, but make it a bit decent looking. So it feels like a spacesuit. So. So I think I should add a bit of a wire to this. So I'm going to use the cylinder and place it roughly around the position I want. And then use the bend curve, bend curve to place it roughly like this and scaling the resolutions to make it a bit more bendy bendy and I think the wires were coming from the side so I'm going to tweak that like so and then confirm maybe shrinking a bit Polish. Mm, I could use the crease and sneak hook Oh, it's generating additional polygroups that I don't want, so I'm going to use the lasso. Do you prefer to start from a base mesh or do everything from scratch? Depends on the time and depends on how much like practice I would expect from that project. So if I'm doing it for a practice, I would always start from scratch. And like if I want to practice more on like detailing stuff, then I would put like I would start from like base mesh and then just focus on that. But if I'm like working on a project where I need to like rush things, um, base mesh would be the way to go. But yeah, I tend to like work on projects from scratch, you like starting from a sphere because um, it's a good practice or like it's a good way to like learn anatomy and then like reconfirming that your knowledge is correct or incorrect.
So looking at the suit, there should be a connection between the backpack and the suit itself. And it looks like it's a like a cover, like a cloth looking like a rectangle where it like hides the cables and the connections between the two. So let's make this by using cloth like we made like we did for this one but without using the collisions because it's going to be a bit hard to do I think I just need to use the zero measure to get the rough shapes and I just need to use the inflate expand without gravity and no collision volume and let's see what happens so it looks like this and currently it's just a rectangle so it's it looks really odd right so I'm gonna tweak this by using the inflate brush maybe cloth inflate cloth inflate cloth dimple cloth yeah cloth inflate and then just tweak the settings So something like this, and because I don't want pointy things on the corners, I'm going to hide this. And I do think it's just like focus on the upper torsos and not on the bottom torso. I don't think it's connected on the bottom torso. Yeah, looking at the image, there's a slight like connection, like a ridge between the two. So, and then let's see if we can add more wrinkles to it by using the inflate by x y z expand on x and z. Let's see what happens. Yeah, and then just tweak it by using snake hook and getting them into position. I'm gonna like stop some overlaps. And I think it looks more bulky than it currently is. Currently it's a bit thin. So a bit more cloth to it. Inflate brush would be the way to go, I guess.
So I did sculpt the rough shape of the the folds, and now I could add a bit more like overlapping folds using the inflate, like this. Also, if you want some overhangs, you can use the gravity setting on the brush. So if you go to the depth, there's a gravity strength here. So you can slightly change the gravity setting, like, I guess 80 would be nice. And then it will have that kind of like, kind of like draping happening on the bottom portion of the foot and plate. And now if I do some like inflates, it's gonna have that kind of like overhanging on the inflates. So this is sometimes like handy for doing some cloth sculpting. If it's too much, like you can stop at any time if you want. And currently it just like doesn't have that crispiness so I'm gonna like, add that like slight texturing or a like, slight look to it so you can sculpt and then add those kind of like, tiny wrinkles and like the sharp edges at the end And currently the silhouette isn't looking sharp, so I'm going to tweak the, the corners so it looks a bit more slightly smarter than it looks. So something like this. And the leg itself doesn't really have that kind of like fold as well, so I'm going to add additional folds to the legs. It's usually better to like have the reference image next to the model, but since I don't want to like get too much influenced 
from the reference image like I'm placing it outside my window. Like I do want to like make it look realistic but not 100% realistic then it looks exactly like land so And now I would like to make the silhouettes a bit more wrinkly. I need to do the backside as well, like having a bit more interesting shapes on the back.
Okay, so it's currently time to end my stream. Do you have any questions? If not, then I'm gonna end my stream here. Thanks for watching. And mm, I think I should work on a couple of like design elements and then switch to posing after like one or two streams. There's a difference. I'm gonna add the creasing, divide, it's fine. No problem. Happy to sculpt. I'm looking at like references and there's a couple of like images where it sometimes doesn't make sense but like looking at the additional like informations that I can have like for example like the image on the right hand side looks like black and on the left hand side it looks totally like more like a silver or a gold color and this is because there's additional like shielding on top so sometimes they they don't want to like look at the sun directly so it's preventing that from happening like you can see that from here and you need to look at a lot of like references if like if you're working on it and these kind of like diagrams showing where the things are or what how the layer is like uh, placed and what kind of like difference like material material is used these kind of diagra diagrams is really handy when you're making these kind of stuff because you're not an expert <laughs> like you're not you're not an astronaut working in the industry so usually if you're like looking for images references and if you're getting confused it's better to look for these these kind of like diagrams where it where it explains what it does and what it's for and like sometimes if you look at images like now you see there's a tv camera on the thing or the lights on the side and the the display and control modules here as well so and there's some differences between the nasa spacesuit and the iss spacesuit so yeah and like and sometimes if you're looking for images and then if you just search um, spacesuit, you might find some like Russian, like Soviet era um, spacesuit and you, you're getting sometimes confused. But if you look at diagrams, you're not going to get confused. So sometimes these things are handy and it sometimes explain internal things like liquid cooling and ventilation garments, which is cool. <laughs> So you can see some stitch marks, but this is really rough. So it's better to like look for these kind of close-ups where you can see there's a stitch. And these kind of stitches are sometimes really specific. And makes a specific pattern around the hands and the, the arms and these kind of stuff. Like you can see there's a stitch around this backpack as well and it's connecting from the back of the back portion of the body and to the the mount of the the backpack so yeah these kind of stuff is really important when you're looking for references and currently i just started beginning with the reference collections so i need to continue collecting references and trying to see if there's a lot of like high res references and of, of course there's some kind of like additional things where 
there's a hook. <laughs> I didn't notice when I was designing things. And you can see there's like things that might be like different when it's like doing some additional operations. And you can see there's a camera, but hey, what is this? Like it has things in additional on top of it. Like this is like semicircular on the back, but this is not. So yeah, so these kind of stuff exist. So be aware of those things if you're looking for references. And you, you can decide, pick and choose between the references. And if you're like specifically looking for a specific area of things, then you need to go to the museum. But currently I'm just working on like a space suit looking thing. So it doesn't need to be specific, but specific, specificity will help, I guess. So like if you look at the gloves, this is an older glove compared to the current glove that he's wearing. Sometimes those, those kind of differences will be like significant. Like you can see there's a date tag on this one. It says 2001. So it's 19 or like 21 years old image. So you can guesstimate where this is coming from and what kind of different equipment it has. And you can see there's a TV camera here as well. And there's some kind of like a, a wrapping around it. Interesting, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to end my stream here. So hope you enjoyed. So see you soon.